Makoya Island in Lake Rotorua is home to the legend of New Zealand's own star-crossed lovers, Hinemoa and Tutanakai. Forbidden by her father from seeing Tutanakai, Hinemoa swam more than three kilometres out to the island, guided by the sound of Tutanakai's flute. What romance and mystery does this island have in place for us today? Well, come with me and find out. from Taupo, he came across to visit Fakoe over here on the island who was living with his wife, Tangiru. So he came up to the island and he went and knocked on the door. Tangiru came to the door and he said, Oh, Kai Hetaku Fanango. She says, Oh, he's gone to Makatu. He's looking for, going to get Kai Moana, you know. He goes over there for three months at a time. So he looked at her and he said, Aha. She said, Aha. They both are hard and she became pregnant. Fakoe adopted Tutanakai as his own son. Yeah. And uh, uh, if, if he hadn't, of, uh, I probably, probably wouldn't be here, this my ancestor. As Tutanakai was growing up, Fakoe decided to dedicate him to Tumatoinga, the god of war. So he said to uh, his tohunga, Muri Rangaranga, he said, Muri Rangaranga, haramai, mahi anga karakia, motakutama. So Muri Rangaranga performed the ceremony, and by rights he was tapu, he was sacred. He was not allowed to eat food with his hands. Sometimes you'll see photos with a uh, Tohung with his hands behind the back and people feeding him yeah. because of the sacredness. Within the three months, they say he was wandering around the island and he looked and he saw these ripe, ripe puru puru berries. So he looked around, nobody watching, so he thought he'd start having a kai. Someone saw him and reported it to Fakoe. And Fakoe said by doing that, he'd put a curse on his son. And it was sacrilege to shed the blood of a Tohunga, so what they did, they took the Tohung out of the lake, put his foot on his head and drowned him under the water. <laughs> And from the right arm bone of Muri Rangaranga was made the, the kōwawa, the, the flute for Tutanakai. Yeah. And that's where that saying came from. As sweet as marrow was the sound of the music of Tutanakai flute. To Hinamor's ears as he, she swam over the lake. What happened is they used to visit a lot on the island. They go out and visit the different marae. So they went over to um, Hinamor Point, as it's called now. And, Hin and Tutanakai looked over and he saw this beautiful maiden. He fell, fell in love with her and she fell in love with him. Inamore's parents didn't want her to have anything to do with Tutanakai. They said he was a, a bastard child. But Tutanakai said, that at nights I'm going to sit up on Kaiweka, I'm going to play my kowawa. Inamore could bear it no longer, so she went down to grab a waka, but they pulled all the canoes up. So they knew what was happening, so she put on these two calabashes, goods, jumped to the water, and she swam across to the music of Tutanakai's flute, and she ended up in this pool. Tutanakai's uh, Mokai came down to get some water at the spring. As he's going past, he says, Koi he says, oh, ko tiki. Tiki was his name, the Mokai of Tutanakai. So he went up to tell Tutanakai. He came running down the pool with his taiha. Looking around, they said there was some flax was hanging over the side. He saw the figure there and he pulled it past it. Aha, <laughs> she said aha. Because she'd swum across, they allowed her to marry him. The story of Hinemoa and Tutanakai on Makoya Island is one of those wonderful love stories that ended happily ever after.